but it's a pirate's favorite fast food restaurant. And it is at Long John Silver's. <laughs> Army. <laughs> Why did the pirate get both ears pierced? It was a buccaneer. <laughs> the jokes aren't going to get better. <laughs> Play along and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you got some scary jokes, young lady. Sirs and madams, me kaka here. And on today's episode of Say by the Bell, our two ghost hunters, Doom Hanks and Mac Demon, go on a ghost tour in St. Augustine, Florida. So trick or treat and smell my feet. Shake your booty and fasten your sheet belts because we're off on another fantastic adventure. Now, it's hard for us to imagine the kind of fears that people lived with 200 years ago. Some of them we still share. We're afraid of things like natural disasters and disease. But they had very real fears of things that most of us can't even imagine. And one of those was of being buried alive. It happened a good bit back then. See, the only thing that a doctor had to treat you with was patent medicine. And that's got three ingredients, water, grain alcohol and opium so the cure might kill you or it might take you right to the edge of death you're in a deep coma 200 years ago the doctor doesn't know it so you're going six feet under that was a terrifying prospect but some enterprising men they came up with a brilliant idea they designed something they called a safety coffin it was just a regular coffin but they ran a pipe from the coffin to the surface at the surface, they attached a bell, and then they ran a line from the bell back down through the pipe and tied it off to various parts of the supposed corpse. I pretty much guarantee you that if you wake up in your grave, you're going to start moving. And when you do, that bell is going to ring. And during the day, people are all over town. They hear it. They get the cemetery sexton who unearths you. This is where the phrase comes from. You've been saved by the bell. What if you wake up at night, though? Story might not have a happy ending. So some other guys came up with the idea of hiring guards, sentries who would just patrol through graveyards all night long, listening for this. And if they heard it, they brought you to the surface. You owed your life to the men working the graveyard shift. Now take a look around you. We have pirates. We have this lovely execution. Would be a shame to waste these, wouldn't it? Who doesn't love a great hydrant story? Am I right? What is a pirate's favorite fast food restaurant? And it isn't Long John Silver's. <laughs> Army. <laughs> Why did the pirate get both ears pierced? It was a buccaneer. <laughs> The jokes aren't going to get better. <laughs> Play along and nobody gets hurt. Back during Spanish settlement, the bane of the existence of Spanish settlers was English pirates, constantly sacking the city, constantly fording their ships. The Spanish governor got sent up, put together an early version of a SWAT team, and one by one they took down all those English pirates, so there was only one guy left. This fellow right here, Andrew Ransom. But the 1684, Andrew Ransom's luck ran out. Spanish SWAT team boarded his ship. They put his men in shackles. They took them across the street to put them to hard labor, building the Castillo de San Marcos. You see, up till then, our fort was made out of wood. Today, our walls are 16 feet thick, made of quarried stone. <coughs> so that's hard labor but it isn't what you do to a pirate captain. You have to make an example out of them. And what better example than public execution? You know, back then there wasn't a lot of recreation to be had. No Netflix, no organized team sports. You don't pile the kiddies in the station wagon and head to the beach. If you want good old fashioned family fun, you pack the family and you go to town for a public execution. On the day that Andrew Ransom was due to meet his maker, this town was packed. There were families. They brought their children. They brought picnic baskets. There were priests. There were monks. There were soldiers. There were sailors. Would you be willing to help me with the demonstration? Mm -hmm. All right. 
I would suggest handing off the purse. What I'm going to ask you to do is uh, follow me up these steps and do be careful. They are steep and we're not ready to kill you yet. <laughs> if you'll come right up here and stand with your back to the post, staring out at a crowd that wants nothing more than your gruesome death. Die! <laughs> <laughs> now this isn't just a festive occasion, though gosh darn it's fun. It's also a legal proceeding. So we have to begin with the reading of the death warrant. A hush fell over the crowd. It was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Then they saw a dark figure moving towards the crowd. It was the executioner. Would the governor intervene, grant a reprieve to Andrew Ransom? Or would this villainous pirate finally meet his end? Everyone took it. And held it. Andrew Redson, you have been found guilty of the crime of piracy and sentenced to death by Garoti. What I will do is I will take this rope and I will pass it around your thieving pirate neck. I will bring it back through the hole in this post. I will tie it off to a baton and turn that baton again and again until the rope tightens and you will meet your death in one of three delicious ways. Suffocation <laughs> is a little boring. No. <laughs> bleeding. Oh, there's going to be lots of bleeding, trust me. Or the crowd favorite, decapitation. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose your head, Andrew. <laughs> All right. Now, remember, this is a festive occasion, so there are people in the crowd who actually want to place bets on how many turns of the rope it's going to take to end the life of the filthy, thieving pirate. In as vile a voice as I can manage, I am going to give you the countdown. On the first turn of the rope, the pirates seemed eerily calm for someone about to meet their doom. On the second turn of the rope, the pirate began gasping for air. Gasp, gasp, good in gasp. Right? <laughs> <laughs> On the third turn of the rope, people in the crowd began to notice that the pirate was grappling with something in his hands. Grapple there, Andrew, there you go. Catholic rosary beads? What was an English Protestant pirate doing with Spanish Catholic rosary beads? It's not going to help where you're going, trust me. <laughs> On the fourth turn of the rope, the pirate's skin began to turn purple. Don't get bored. <laughs> On the fifth turn of the rope, his eyes bulged from his head. Again, don't try that, okay. <laughs> On the sixth turn of the rope, what do you think happened on the sixth turn of the rope? Who's the nice boss? His eyes popped out. Any other guesses? Fucking. <laughs> the rope broke. Ew. And the pirate took in a huge gasp of air. <sighs> and the crowd, as one, took in a huge gasp of air. <sighs> and they held still until a priest ran up from the crowd and said, We have seen a miracle! This man has been saved by God. Come to the Cathedral Basilica and we will grant you sanctuary. Go ahead, Andrew. Go get sanctuary. And everyone in the crowd gave Andrew a big round of applause. Yes. Everyone except the seething Spanish governor. All he wanted was to see that pirate die a slow, painful death. But you see, he had no jurisdiction over the church. And so he had to just stew over the fact that Andrew had been granted Catholic sanctuary. Well, he lived in that sanctuary for several years, but let's face it, he was a pirate. He was used to freedom and he wanted his freedom again. So he brokered a deal with the city of St. Augustine. He agreed to go to the Castillo de San Marcos and he became the foreman of a crew of his former pirates 
finishing the building of our stem fort. In 1702, after the English attacked St. Augustine, he even agreed to be an interpreter for all of those English-speaking prisoners. Now, he, he's a traitor. Let's let him know. Traitor! Come on, traitor! Traitor! God damn it. <laughs> well, Andrew, Andrew got his own special kind of revenge. You see, Andrew fell in love with a beautiful Spanish lady. Do you have any idea who she might have been? The governor's only daughter. <laughs> you talk about awkward family dinners. <laughs> now, they remained married the remainder of their life. They had children, and after that, there were children and children for generations until today, 350 years later there are still descendants of Andrew Ranson and his beautiful Spanish wife running around St. Augustine. Now, are they doing so because of a miracle from God? Or is it a simple twist of fate? Nellie, I want you to go out there with Casper. Get back on that trolley of the dune before something grabs you in here. All right, go. Aray, what a scary story. I think I shattered my pants. Oh my goodness, my friends. This video has come to an end. I hope this experience has brought much joy and laughter to your heart and soul. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update from us. And if you want to stay connected, be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms. Your support means the world to us. Hey. What's a pirate goat's favorite beverage? Booty! Are I did good? Okay, ding ding ding, thank you, come again! So, electromagnetic field, it should be at zero zero. It is. Okay, if it spikes up, then you're. Beep 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 beep! It's not a stud finder, because you ain't no stud. <laughs>